Hallelujah. Earnestly I seek you. My soul is thirsty for you. Your love is better than life. How many people love the Lord here this morning? You are a lover of God. Can you wave your hands if you are? If you are a God hater, please don't raise your hands. But if you are a lover of the Lord, raise your hands and tell him, Jesus, I love you. Help me with the sound here. Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Jesus, I love you. You are my everything. Tell him he's your everything. Lord, you're my everything. Lord, you're my everything this morning. Just have a come and sing that song. We draw, we draw, we draw. Say, Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus, you are my today. Jesus, you're my tomorrow. For Jesus, you are my yesterday. Not you were. You are my yesterday. He's I am. Yesterday, I am. Today, I am. Tomorrow, I am. He's never I was. He's I will be. His name is I am. I am. I am. I am. Say, Jesus, you are my today. Jesus, you are my yesterday. Jesus, you are my tomorrow. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. You are my everything, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Again, again. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We have come to draw. from a well how many people know what I'm talking about our traditional way of drawing water from a well you need something made of rubber locally it is called what help me one more time the door will be tied to a rope that goes where deep down if you don't go deep down this morning you are not gonna strike water not only that, your doro, or shall I say your doro, must not be leaking. If your doro is leaking, you will exert energy to let it down. And then you bring it up, it's empty. It becomes no work done at the end of the day. May there no be no work done in this place this morning. Hallelujah. So what are you drawing with this morning? Your doro. Now your spiritual doro is your faith. Hallelujah. This morning you will draw, you will draw from the wells of salvation. You will draw and you will appropriate, you will enjoy what you draw. You won't come up with an empty door. Somebody sing. We have come to draw. We have come to draw. Hallelujah. Draw. We have come to draw. We have come to draw life. Your Zoe life. Your overflowing life. Your unending life. We have come to draw strength. Your unlimited strength. Your endless strength. 
we have come to draw wisdom your wisdom beyond words your wisdom that the adversary cannot resist or gain say we have come to draw your wisdom we have come to draw light your revelation light your light life your light energy we have come to draw light <laughs> light that defines life that distinguishes we have come to draw light we have come to draw your glory your glory that the adversary cannot withstand we have come to draw your glory hey we have come to draw your power your power your power that nothing can resist your power that no force can stand against we have come to draw your power we draw with faith we draw in faith lord everyone who draws will be totally transformed in every aspect of life and the glory and the glory shall be yours forever for this we give you glory and honor Lord Jesus for you are the Lord our King blessed be your name in Jesus name Amen Amen you may be seated help me to appreciate the choir together with the instrumentalists hallelujah they have been a blessing since Wednesday hallelujah and if you notice the kinds of songs they were singing at the World Conference up till this morning, they are messages. Messages. You will think, you will ponder. Hallelujah. Some people come to church to play church. They see church as tradition. You are no different from a demon. Demons come to church. Satan comes to church. He's religious and coming to church. The Lord asked Satan where he was coming from. And he answered, from going up and down. Because when the sons of God came to present themselves to God, the devil too was there. Ah, why are you here? He said, that's my business. Have you forgotten my configuration? You gave it to me. I go up and down. I go everywhere. Amen. So if you will just come for the sake of coming, what makes you different from a demon or from the devil? But if you come to be transformed, if you come with an open heart, but we all with open faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we all are changed into the same image, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. If you come with an open heart, you have come to be transformed. If you have come with the mindset, I've come to meet Jesus, you have come to be transformed. Because some come... Because their parents force them to come. Some come because, you know, these children, if you don't introduce them to the ways of God, they will become wayward. So they are coming for the sake of their children. They're not coming for their own sake. Hallelujah. That's one. So don't play church. Always mean business with Jesus. Please, all our 70-year-olds and above, can you stand? If you're 70 years old and above, please stand. Thank you, sir. I said, if you're 70 years old, help me to tap her. She's laughing. We're not the same age, ma. We know you. 70 years, I see you up there as well. How many of them are standing up? Three of them. So three of them are up, two of them. Oh, another three. So three up, three down. Please celebrate those people. Help me to celebrate them. If you are close to them, shake hands with them. You know, elbow shake. Uh -huh. Elbow shake them. Elbow shake. We said elbow shake, not handshake. Elbow shake. Uh -huh. Elbow shake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The rest of us can sit down while they are still standing. The rest of us can sit while they are still standing. The rest of us can sit while they are still standing. Thank you. Thank you. You know why? Sir. Ma, sir, and madams upstairs, do you know it's a blessing at over 70 to be able to come to church and sit through the entire service? If you are on constant medication and you have to <laughs> go and take medication or something, you have a health condition, you can't come like this. It's a blessing. We must not take it for granted. Does it mean that you haven't been through challenges? You've been through challenges, but in it all, you are standing. And it is my prayer that for long you will live to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. All you see around you will make you glad. 
all you see around you will cause you to be satisfied in the name of Jesus sons and madams please enjoy us hmm? enjoy with the younger ones we will make you younger I'm serious so enjoy us always look forward to come to you and enjoy us she that one small small boy saying but she man so enjoy us she that one more chin 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 enjoy us we will make you live longer we will make you enjoy living it's a psychological research they did and they found out to keep older citizens uh, uh, sickness free they started building schools beside them nursery schools beside their homes and uh, break time they take the children to the nursing homes to play with those older ones their health began to improve their health began to improve you know why influence the power of influence sons and madams let we the younger ones influence you bad ones and enjoy sound health is that okay laugh when we're laughing even if you don't understand what we are saying eventually you don't. <laughs> and i know you understand what we are saying hallelujah god bless you maybe seated praise god <laughs> Glory, glory. Uh, since Wednesday, we've been talking about mind in the world. Mind in the world. Why the world has to be mind. The world has to be mind. And today we want to uh, see what we've titled mining tips. So these are just tips. Tips are not elaborate. Uh, tips are just a few words, a few nuggets that are simple and easy to understand and recall. But they are very fundamental because uh, they can define the ultimate outcome of whatever's going on. Those tips. You know, many times uh, and all the time in the game of soccer, the manager or the coach is where? By the sidelines. Does he play with the players? No. If he enters the field to play with the players, what's going to happen? They'll be disqualified. Amen. But guess what? In the game of life, the coach is with us. He plays with us. Unlike soccer. Soccer, the manager will be on the sidelines. He'll be shouting. Not like that man, the one they call the coach of Arsenal. I'm not a soccer fan. So no bias. No prejudice. This is uh, unbiased, without prejudice. The man will just be looking like this. When his team is losing, he'll just be looking like this. <laughs> but there are some coaches, they'll be shouting. There's one man, the tie will come off. <laughs> He's giving them tips. Fall back, fall back. Defend, close the back. You attack, attack. <laughs> He's giving tips. Those tips, at times, he makes a change. And the person that goes in, goes and scores. And that becomes the end of the match. So those tips are very, very important because they can make or ma. So we're looking at mining tips. And we have agreed, we have said that in mining, we excavate, we dig, we explore, we exploit, we, we, we drill, yes. We, we research, we search, hallelujah. I thought the church will help me. It's only Sister Bolanli. You know, teachers are very good. They remember things. Hallelujah. Turn upside down, inside out, you know, and so on. When, actually, when you look at the design of a drilling equipment, it has grooves. And those grooves have a way of going down and coming back up. So, they mix. What is down comes up, what is up goes down, and, and then the ball, you know. Okay, so God's word requires that effort. So the totality of the process of recognizance, like we heard on Friday. Let me give those who have not been coming a jibe. Where have you been? You say, yeah, a member of this church. Where were you on Wednesday? It's my work. Fine. Where were you on Thursday? Pastor, I closed late. Where were you on Friday? Friday is the beginning of weekend. Where were you? You didn't come. Please, I advise you, go online. All the messages are always archived automatically. Anything in church, go and check and play back and benefit and be blessed. So the entire process of recognizance, that is doing your survey, your background check, exploration and exploitation of natural resources to one's advantage or to one's benefit, or to a nation's advantage or benefit, that is called mining. Now, you could, any natural resource must be mined most of the time. They occur in their natural state, but if they are of value, they are beneath the surface of the earth most of the time. Most of the time. 
Do you know that even water at some point in God's word was under the ground? Until now, water is still under the ground. I'm, going, I'm taking us back to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. And God said, let the waters be gathered to one side that dry ground may appear and it was so. The Bible says the earth standing in water and out of water. So we see that there is water beneath the earth. Hallelujah. So even water is beneath the earth. Talk less of hydrocarbons. Where are hydrocarbons? Beneath the earth. Precious stones, where are they today? Beneath the earth. And the Bible is full of uh, names of precious stones. Pastor Dako was talking about feldspar the other day on Friday. You know, feldspar may not be mentioned in the Bible, but you have amethyst, chrysolite, jasper, oinks. You know, you have all these precious stones right from the beginning, right from Genesis. Hallelujah. So, these precious stones have uh, to be mined, have to be turned upside down. The earth must be dug before we can access them. So I want to talk some more about these things, but um, of course we can't go into the details of what have, have been discussed since Wednesday uh, till Friday. Okay, we have agreed for it has been told us that the ultimate aim of mining any natural resource is exploitation. Until it is exploited, it is of no benefit. Am I correct, sir? Until it is exploited, it is of no benefit. Some people read the word. Some people know the word. But they fail to apply the word to their practical daily challenges. They won't get the results of the word. You can read the Bible. You can study the Bible. You can put the Bible in your head. If the Bible is not in your life, you are not going to get the results of the Bible. God's word must be in your life. So, let it be in your head is good. Let it be in your heart and then let it regulate your life. Let the word be your life. At that point, you are exploiting the resource or the benefits of the word of God. Apply it to your business. Apply those principles to your marriage. Apply those principles to your academics. My wife told me a story this morning. A young girl, a teenager for that matter, she used to write SSE exams. And she said, Ma, I need some little money. And she said, no problem, I'll send it to you. And she said, what do you want to use the money for? She said, I want to use the money uh, uh, to, uh, as a gift for my teachers so that if I don't know any of the questions in the examination, I can give them that money and they can help me so that I can pass the examination examination a teenager well I know that's neither here nor there but see that thinking what do you think is going to happen by the time she moves to high institution if the lecturer demands her body she will offer her body are we getting some of those things so my wife said I'm not I'm sorry I, I can't give you money for that because you know it is wrong after your exams, I will send you money. I'll send you more than you have asked for, but not now. See the thinking. So has she not been exposed to the Bible? She has. Has she not heard God's word before? She has. But is she applying the word of God that she knows to her life? Obviously no. Otherwise, that kind of value won't proceed from her life. The value your life proceeds must reflect the nature of the word of God you carry. At that point, God's word has been mined in you because you are exploiting it. Somebody stay with me up to now. Hallelujah. So it must show in all that we do. It must show in all that we do. So until the word is exploited, ah, we have not mined the word. The wealth of our nation for many years has been defined on the strength of the mineral resources we have. True or false? The chiefest of which is what? Crude oil, which is a hydrocarbon. Lately, they've been struggling with gas, you know, and we've been liquefying gas. And liquefied gas has been bringing a lot of money, but, uh, you know, many times the authorities are silent on that. If you have anybody who works with the LNNG, you will have an idea of what's going on in that sector. Anybody here who, you know, the pay is... 
crazy. A friend of mine, the son graduated from uni, uni with the first class, petroleum engineering, and was offered a job in uh, L, uh, NLNG, Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas. He was offered a job there, and the boy said, I'm not going. The father said, when are you resuming? The boy said, I'm not going. Ah, you are not going where? Are you all right? He said, Daddy, I'm all right. Ah, you've been given an offer. He said, I'm not going. Then where do you want to go? I want to work in your school. The father and the mother run a school. He said, I want to work in your school. He said, school, okay. We can't pay you what they have offered you there. He said, did I ask you for pay? Did I tell you I want to do it for money? He said, this, himself and his wife looked at each other and said, this is a problem. He said, they called the other uh, children. Come and listen to what your brother is saying. They said, leave him alone. He knows what he's doing. That boy got to that school. He revolutionized that school. It's one of the leading schools in this country. They win competitions on the global level. If you've seen any girl coming first in mathematics all over the world, she's a product of that school. Yeah. So this boy brought this method. There must be two teachers for mathematics in class. Somebody teaches from the front, somebody teaches from the back. So as the teacher in front is teaching, the teacher at the back is teaching. Both of them meet in the middle. There is no way that that student will not catch something from mathematics. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it transformed. So, I digressed. I understand. But I'm simply saying, Nigeria not only earns money from crude oil, but also from gas when we liquefy it, when we add value to it. So that defines the strength of a nation at times. Part of why we have this global inflation in the world today is because of the war between Russia and Ukraine. Don't get me wrong, there have been economic pressures, global economic pressures before the war began in February. But right now, those things have been raised, they've been heightened on the strength of that. Why do you think that is so? Russia produces a lot of crude oil. And now that economic sanctions are against them, they can't get out the crude oil. India has been buying from them. China has been buying from them. But the rest of the world is not buying from them. They supply gas to Eastern Europe, Poland, all those places. They have shut the pipelines. They are not making money like before. Those ones have to look in other direction. Now, when supply is reduced, what happens to price? Price goes up. Nigeria is earning a lot right now from crude oil. But the problem is, uh, as we are earning, so it is going out. Because uh, we import refined products uh, in exchange for them. So whatever we gain by selling crude oil, we lose by buying refined products. Uh, because our refineries have failed uh, to be functional. How did we get into economics while preaching on the holy altar of God? I don't know. But I know that we live in an economic world. If you think you don't live in an economic world, raise your hand. And I'll ask you a simple question. What do you spend? As long as you spend money, you live in an economic world. Is someone listening to me? Praise the Lord. So mining is crucial. Uh, let, let's go on. I want to stay with what I have. Mining is crucial. Mining is important. And it tells us mineral resources must be properly administered. It also tells us spiritual resources must be properly administered. Hmm. Precious stones aren't found on the surface. They're found deep down. Pastor Dako told us on Friday. He said, wherever you see rocks, many rocks, be assured that deep down somewhere around there, you're going to find precious stones anytime you find an assemblage of rocks that's not a coincidence it's in the bible i don't have time for us to go there so precious stones are not found on the surface they therefore have to be mined to be drilled to to go deep down in the earth to be able to get them god's word is the same it is sacred it proceeds from god it is spiritual in nature the word of god the word of god is not found in its natural state no it didn't come from natural sources the Bible says, for the word of God is of no private interpretation. Some tradition will say, of no private origin. But holy men of God wrote as they were moved upon or inspired by the spirit of God. Isaiah 34, 16, seek out a book of law and read. None of this shall fail. Not one shall want her made. For my mouth, it had commanded them. And my spirit, it had gathered them. 
Jesus said in John 6 and 63, What know ye not that the words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spirit. Actually, the word of God is his breath. The word of God is his breath. The word of God is his breath. The Hebrew word for breath is ruach. The word of God is his breath. When he speaks, he breathes. When you hear his word, you just uh, received his breath. The ruach, the breath of God. <laughs> and the breath of God is the life of God. Ordinarily, man was a lump of clay. But when the breath of God entered into man, he became a living speaking being like God. The original translation. Is somebody still with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The breath of God. The word of God. Amen. The more you expose your spirit to the word of God, the more you are exposing your life to the breath of God. And when oxygen does not flow freely in a man, then that man is prone to sickness and disease. So they always uh, talk about uh, antioxidants so that there can be no uh, gang up of free radicals. The more your body is oxygenated, the better health you have. Is somebody with me? That is why exercise is good. Why is exercise good? Your circulation, your blood circulation improves. And uh, it is blood in our body that carries what? Oxygen. So the blood flows everywhere. Mom is always sitting down. Mom is always sitting down. You know, I'm very busy as I'm cooking and doing things. So she sits down to cook. Have you seen women, some women, when they sit down and they throw Maggie inside the stew? And they're sitting down there and they're doing homework with the child. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything is why sitting down. In fact, they have swivel chairs so they can roll. Mommy, you are not doing yourself any good with that kind of lifestyle. God designed us to be active. If you know sick people who are bedridden, they are prone to what they call bed sores. Why? God designed us for motion. That's why I celebrated our elders in the house. 70s and above and some are inching towards that and they are looking at me no problem your time will come i will be here as well hallelujah but you see my own age too will not remain static we'll, we'll be advancing together yeah? we'll be advancing together <laughs> hallelujah let's go on Let, let's make some progress so mining the word has to be mined let's open our bibles to 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. So God's word is sacred. It proceeds from God. It's spiritual in nature. It is not natural. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. He cannot receive the things of the spirit of God. Why? He's a natural man. Those things are foolishness unto him. How can God send his son to come and die? Why must your, somebody's son come and die for me? Are we related? Does he know anything? He doesn't have a, an understanding of the nature of the love of God. So he finds it to be foolishness. Foolishness. Let's read again. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. He can't know them. He might attempt to know, but he can't know them. Why? They are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. The understanding of the word, or the unlocking of the word, or the mining of the word of God, has to be by the agency of of the spirit of God, not with uh, human knowledge. There was a time in my life that I chose to begin to read the Bible. This was 1985, I guess. We were having in uh, our church then what we called a 13-day white fasting. How many people know what a white fast is all about? It's not in the Bible, but it's okay if you want to do it. Amen. 13 day white fasting. So no salt, no oil, no pepper, no sugar. Everything was just bland. You cooked yam, no salt in the yam. And then you will boil uh, garden eggs. No so and you be eating garden eggs without salt and yam. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So you didn't even look forward to breaking the fast because what you will eat had no taste. 13 days. So I will pray the little way I could pray way back then. And then I will carry the Bible and read. Not, I didn't gain anything. I was just reading and reading and reading and reading. And to make matters worse, it was a King James translation of a Bible that I was reading. 
Somebody that does not, that he has never been to primary one. He now wants to do school living certificate examination without uh, extra morals. No lessons, nothing. So the Bible was strange to me. I said, what is this? When I got to Chronicles and somebody begat somebody and somebody, be- I said, is this what they read in the Bible? Somebody begat and begat and begat and, and the names you couldn't pronounce? But there came a time in my life after coming to the knowledge of Christ as Lord and Savior, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, the seal of my redemption, I could take the Bible and it could open up to me. Until today, I am still a student of God's word. I'm still digging. I'm still drawing. I'm still mining. I'm still excavating. I'm still going down. I'm still seeking. I'm still searching. And in all that, I keep discovering. I keep seeing more. I keep growing. I keep advancing. It's a process that has no bottom to it. It keeps going on. Is someone listening to me? Hallelujah. Mining tips. So, the word of God must be spiritually discerned. Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and verse 27. What does it say? Acts 8, 27. Some people are not in church with their Bibles. They are waiting for the screen. What if there is a fault and, and, and the scripture does not come up on the screen? What are you going to do? And when you come to church, please take notes down. Or better still, record the message on your device. Even before you now go online to play it back. Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. He was minister of finance. And had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was a proselyte, a, com- a, a, a convert to Judaism, as it were. Verse 28. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. This man was a minister of finance. He was educated. He had a position. He had influence. And he was coming from Jerusalem. He was a proselyte of Judaism, a convert to Judaism. He wanted to know more about the God of Abraham. So he was reading the book of prophet Isaiah because he wanted to know God more. Verse 29. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? I like in James. Understandest thou what thou readest? Help me to ask your neighbor. Understandest thou thy Bible? <laughs> Hallelujah. And when wives get home today, please speak King James to your husbands. My beloved, understandest thou that I am thine wife? And if the man says, yes, I understand this. Tell him, understandest therefore that thou must give us me money. Sister Abelani, don't do it when we get home. <laughs> Why did I say that for God's sake now? Let's go on. Verse 30 again. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. Meaning the man was reading out loudly. Why? To aid his concentration. He heard him reading loudly and said, Do you understand what you are reading? Understand that what thou readest? And he said, How can I? So he was reading what he did not understand. He said, How can I? Except uh, some man should guide me. I need help to be able to understand. I need help to be able to mine this word. If you are not helped, you cannot mine the word of God. Eh? The man needed a man. He said, Except some man guide me. Today, we don't need a man. We need the help of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God may now use men that he has called into offices to teach us. So there's the office of a teacher. But there is also an unction within us. And that is the unction of the Holy Spirit. He also teaches us. 
And when he is come, even the spirit of truth, he will teach you all things. He will show you all things. He will guide you into all truth. The truth is the word of God. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. He will guide you into the truth. He will guide you into the word. He will open up things to you you never knew before. You will see what you've never seen before. You will hear what you've never heard before. And then you can operate at a level where you have never operated before. Is somebody still with me? And they will think there's big deal about you. There's no big deal about you. The big deal about you is the big deal about the word of God. It's just the word of God. Hallelujah. See, God's word is self-sufficient. The power in the word is self-inherent. God's word does not need external interference to be the word. Did you hear what I said? God's word is self-existent. It exists by itself. It is self-fulfilling. It fulfills itself. It does not need you to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ did not need any man to raise him from the dead. Who was he? The living word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So he was God. He was the word. And the word became flesh, or the word was made flesh and dwelt among men. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Is somebody still with me this morning? So it was the word in the grave. Can the word die? <laughs> the word cannot die. So on the third day, <laughs> while dead, the word was walking in hell. So the word was not dead because the word cannot die. Third day, <laughs> that body again resurrected. They thought this was body we battered. This was the body we bruised. This was the body we damaged. This was the body we pierced with the sword or with the spear. Remember, they did all those things. He was bruised. He became of no recognition. His visage was mad. The Bible tells us he had no form or comeliness. That is beauty. That we should behold him. That is, he was beaten to pulp. Amen. And that body again resurrected. This time in glory. You remember when he showed Thomas? He said, see. A spirit does not have body like I have. See the print of the nails. He showed him the print of the spear. He said, stop doubting, only believe. Ha. Huh. Thomas said, my Lord. Oh my God. The first time that expression was given in the Bible, was given by a doubter. He said, my Lord and my God. He caught a revelation. He moved from doubt to the point of believing and he expressed his belief with a revelation. Is that, is that not something? That, that's something. That's something. Hmm. So the eunuch needed help to mine or to understand the word. Because the Bible tells us what happened in 31. And he said, how can I accept some man shall guide me? And is that Philip that he will come up and sit with him? And Philip took him from that scripture. He introduced Christ unto him. Amen. The mining process begins with a sense of awareness. You must carry a sense of awareness. Something is going on around here. You must have heard stories before of people seeing shiny metal-like objects on the face of the ground in some parts of the country. Amen. Some parts of the country, some parts of Oshun State, they will tell you they saw things sh with shiny surfaces. Sir? Do you. Re okay. Grandpa, am I making some sense? This is some shiny surfaces. When you take a pickaxe that we locally call digger, or that illiterate people call jigger, but it's a pickaxe, and, and you. Start digging. You start digging. You won't, you won't see it. But you saw some shiny things. Well, that's an indication that something is going on around there. But that thing is beyond ordinary rich. I have been to a local mining field before to preach. This must have been 1996. There's a village called Olode. How many people have heard of Olode village? Beyond Akonor, you know, you go. It's a mining field, a geologist who is a missionary pastor had a walk there amongst miners and he being a geologist. So he invited me to preach there in 1996. And uh, we preached, we had a nice time and so on and so on. And then after the service, they now said, pastor, come and visit some of the fields. 
and I will see local miners. No equipment. All they had was this sharp metal thing with a pointed edge. They'll be digging manually. And when you look down, the shaft, the hole, is wide at the mouth. But as it's going down, it becomes narrow and deep and deep. And there is a man sweating down there digging and digging with his bare hands. Looking for precious stones all over the village. Looking. And finally, when I got to the village, no electricity. I don't know whether they now have. There was no electricity then. No pipe bone water. But there was no exotic chocolate or biscuit or drink you wanted to buy that was not available. There, there was nothing you wanted to buy in any supermarket in town here that was not on sale there. How many people know the place? Ah, okay. Okay, maybe just a few. Okay, sir. And I was wondering what's going on. They said, ah, once the man makes a fund, take note of that, he makes a fund because God's word must be found. When the man makes a fund, takes the stone, goes to clean it up, leaves the village to go and dispose of the stone. And then money arrives. You won't see him in the pit again until when he finishes spending that money. Exotic cars, alcohol, the opposite sex, living like the prodigal son. When the money is gone, he remembers the whole. And then he puts on his whatever again with his implement in his hand and goes back to, to dig. And people say, you are back. I say, I'm back home. <laughs> like the prodigal son. A lot of demonic activity in that place. So at that meeting, it turned to a deliverance session. So what am I saying? We have to dig to find. We have to dig God's word to find God's word like we've heard. Okay. So finding the word now kicks in because a sense of awareness uh, is created. But that awareness will lead us to other things. Let's read Matthew 13, 44 to 45 or to 46. Matthew 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Hid in a field. It is hidden. That treasure is hidden. If it is available, it's no longer treasure. <laughs> it's hidden. So the word of God contains treasure that pertains to us that is hidden. But like we heard on Thursday, it is hidden for us. It is not hidden from us. Treasures hidden. Hidden for us. Hidden for our benefit. Not from us. Because God wants us to have them. How do we have them? Following his principles. Can someone say, I will. I will do just that. I will follow the principles of God. Amen. So the kingdom of God is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found. You have to find it. The word of God must be found. The kingdom of God must be found. You must find the kingdom in your business. You must find the kingdom in your health. You must find the kingdom over your finances. You must find the kingdom over your future. You must find the kingdom over your academics. You must find the kingdom. Find it. And where is it? In his word. Is someone with me? In his word. So he, he found it and he hid it. And for joy thereof, he goeth and selleth all that he had and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, precious stones. A merchant. He's seeking because you have to seek in order to find. He's seeking. When you are seeking, you are actively searching. You are meticulously searching. Nothing misses your attention. Everything matters. Stop glossing over things in God's word. Let's stop glossing over things. Let everything matter. You get to a place you don't understand, underline. You don't understand, underline. Inquire, probe, ask questions. What can this mean? Is there a scripture that looks like this in some other place? Check out that scripture. In what circumstance was it used? I've seen this name before. Let me check it out wherever I've seen it before. We live in the days of technology. These days, people leverage technology for their businesses. They leverage technology for their purchases. They leverage technology, you know, to pass their exams. They fail to leverage technology to grow in faith. There's technology available for everything. But how many of us leverage technology for your spiritual growth, for our spiritual growth? How many of us? How many of us? You've downloaded every app, but you don't have version on your phone. Oh, 
yes, I have a Bible on my phone. It's the default King James translation that came with that phone that is there. So when they mention another translation, I don't have that. But you have Instagram, you have to go, you have we, you have Snapchat, you have everything. We now know where you are. We can locate you. What is all this going? If somebody has come to church, let him just preach and go and sit down. I must be getting at somebody. Ah, the word of God must get at us. Have you forgotten the story of a, a pastor that said uh, he got to church one Sunday and he said, do you cheer? You better repent because hell is real and heaven is real. And so on and so on. You table, you have to stand well, be established, be grounded. And they said, pastor, ah, is everything okay? He said, everything is okay. They said, why are you addressing the chair and the table? He said, you said I've been talking about you. So I said, I will stop talking about you and start preaching to the table. And they said, no, pastor, uh -uh. no. Coleto, yeah, preach to us. Anything you tell us, we will do. Uh, this one that you are preaching to, they said, what well, you said I was talking about you. So who else do you think uh, the message is meant for? It is meant for us. When I say us, it includes the man talking. Praise the Lord. When you look at the mirror, who do you see? Who do you see in the mirror? You see yourself. What is God's word? A mirror. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it's a mirror. So what do we see in the mirror? Ourselves. So that we can change and be conformed to the image of Christ, the mirror. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Okay? Let's, let's make some progress. I want to read that in the Passion Translation. Matthew 13. Heaven's kingdom reign can be illustrated like this. A person discovered. So, in digging, there is discovery. A person discovered that there was hidden treasure in the field. Upon finding it, in digging, there is finding. He hid it again. Because of uncovering such treasure, he was overjoyed and sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field so that he can have access to more treasure. So there is treasure and there is more treasure. Hmm. And sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field just so he could have the treasure. Heaven's kingdom realm is also like a jewel merchant in search of rare pearls. When he discovered one very precious and exquisite pearl, he immediately gave up all he had in exchange for it. Search, seek, find, and use to your pleasure. So at the survey stage, like we heard, we consider availability. So availability of a precious stone is available. This is, is established. So we know that God's word contains everything. In the world is available all that makes for life and godliness. We know that. Second Peter 1. We know that uh, the quality of, a, of a, the type of a precious stone or the mineral is established. The quality is established. The quantity is established. Why dissipate energy over something that is not available in commercial quantity? Hallelujah. They've been doing exploration work in a basin in, in in Bronu, in the northeast, so that oil can be discovered in the north, so that if we break up as a nation, at least there'll be something for that part of the country. And I found a geologist, a senior geologist working in uh, NNPC, who told me something. I said, ah, by the way, they found something in Benue. He said, like you said on, on Friday, interstitial water. He said that was not in commercial quantity. He said because what is in the Bornu Basin is not also in commercial quantity, but it's politics behind it. The joint, oh no. There's something called joint venture cash calls, JVCC. How many people have heard that before? J thank you. That is what the oil companies, oil exploring companies, it's like 60-40. They give 60, government gives 40 for exploration and uh, they you know, explore, exploit the crude oil in barrels, you know, and then they divide proceeds in that order, in that fashion, you know, so it's a joint venture, you know, but many times our government will renege on its own obligation, but for the exploration work they were doing there, they pumped money, the money they wouldn't give them for South-South development, whether onshore or offshore, they will make, uh, it's, it has turned to politics now. Praise the Lord. Anyway, this guy told me there's a backflow of hydrocarbons under the ground, under the earth. You know, back into, because of the topography. So it's high up north, it's lower around the middle bell, so there's a gradient. So there's a backflow 
into the bed that it is not in commercial quantity. Pastor, don't be deceived. That's how this guy told me. He said, I should not be deceived that Nigeria is a complex place. So, when we are doing the survey, we know whether what we have available is in commercial quantity. Is it worth me selling all that I have to buy this field? Ah, for precious stones, physical precious stones, you need to do that analysis. For the word of God, the analysis is a given. Amen. It is worth it. <laughs> Whatever investment you will make for the word of God to be your life is worth it. Did you hear what I said? Let the word of God be your life. So that when they cut you open and you are bleeding, you are bleeding the word. Amen. When, when they check you under the microscope or under the x-ray, what they see is uh, the power of the world. In the days of John G. Lake, when that bubonic plague broke out and people were dying, and uh, I think he even lost his wife or so in the process. They were missionaries in South Africa, you know, and uh, that plague was killing people. When they, he said, put the virus, put it on my body. They put it on his hand, put it under your microscope. The plagues were dying. The viruses were dying in his own body. But the viruses were killing others by their thousands. But in his own body, they were dying. That man was saturated with the life of the word of God. I'm saying it's possible for us to be saturated with the life of the word of God like that. But it takes uh, discipline. It takes uh, paying the price. Uh, not lazy Christians. Some Christians want the pastors to pray for them. Welcome to my world. I will pray for you. Come. But before you come, I'll give you my account details. My turn agent. Some like to be deceived. We're not meant to be deceived. Listen, once you are deceived, you are defeated. If you cannot be deceived, you cannot be defeated. The devil deceived Eve and he defeated them in the garden. Praise the Lord. Is somebody still with me this morning? Hallelujah. No more laziness. Mining is tough work. To mine the world, be ready to walk. Be ready for blisters. Our local miners, they will have blisters. At times they take enhancers so that they can keep at it. Am I correct, sir? They take enhancers because mining is capital intensive. Amen, as we're going to see. Okay, so the tips. There are three tips. The first tip is mining rights. You need a right. The mining right is your authorization to mine. Authorization. You must be authorized to mine. Ask, am I authorized to mine? If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are authorized to mine the word of God. You have access to mine the word of God. The blood of Jesus has qualified you. The Holy Ghost has qualified you. Amen. The cross qualified you. You have the right, mining rights. Listen, if you, if you must mine for precious stones in Nigeria, you must carry a mining license. Am I correct, sir? You need a mining license. That license authorizes you to mine in that place. That place. The geographical area defined in the license. The word of God has given us a geographical area for us to operate in. Where is that area? Anything called earth. Anywhere called earth. Hallelujah. Anywhere called earth. That includes Nigeria. That includes Siberia. Anywhere called earth. Hallelujah. And not only that, we affect the heavens. For there is a name given unto us that is above every other name. It controls what goes on in heaven. It determines what goes on on earth. It affects what goes on beneath the earth. Can you see? Can you see the expression of the area of our influence and authority as believers in Christ Jesus? There are things we say that heavens have to intervene over. There are things we say that are taken care of earth level. There are things we take that are taken care of beneath the earth. You. Amy. Yes, you. Because uh, you are a believer in Christ Jesus. Is somebody still with me this morning? Have I said anything that is not in the Bible? Let me know if I'm blaspheming. Mining rights. As many as believed in him, to them gave he power. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's read together. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Those who believe on his name have been given power or the right. New King James will say the right to be the sons of God. The passion will say authority or authorization. Let's read from passion. John 1 12. But those who embraced him and took hold of his name, he gave authority to become the children of God. We have the authority to 
Mind the word of God. Something happened in the book of Revelations. The Lamb of God took the scroll. He had the scroll in his hand. The scroll had 12 seals on it. And the, and, and the heavenly council, the angels, you know, and the elders, they began to weep because there was no one worthy to break the seals and to open the scrolls. <laughs> but guess what? The Bible says the lamb appeared as of one slain and he took the scroll out of the one, out of the hand of the one who held it. He broke the seals thereof. He opened the scroll. Hallelujah. He, th that says the one who had authority to break the seal. Listen. For those of us in the corporate world, you know what a seal is? A seal gives authenticity to a document. Now, when it is a, a contractual seal, a legal seal, you know, we use red wax. Yeah, we burn red wax. It's contractual in nature. And once the document is sealed like that, to break that seal and to open that document, you must have authorization. If you are not authorized to do that, you have committed a criminal offense. I don't know punishable by what section of the law. You know, I'm not a lawyer. Hallelujah. I prefer medicine. Not law. MBBS bodies are still intact. We still got accreditation recently. Amen. From headache to toenail, you can see me. Surgical cases, I refer you to my superiors. Don't try it at home. <laughs> I was only kidding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mining rights. You carry the right. Do you know, do you know that we just read 1 Corinthians where it says uh, they can't understand this because it is spiritually discerned. Maybe we can read it again. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. Do you know there was a day that Jesus gave the parable, the parable of the sower. And in that parable, he said, so I went out to sow, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, some among rocks, some, and so on and so on. Remember that parable. And when they got home, the disciples said, ah, oh God, tell us the meaning of the parable. What did he tell them? He said to you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. They had mining rights. Others did not have mining rights. They had authority to hear. They had authority to dig. They had authority to understand. Others do not have. Hallelujah. You know what it means to have mining rights? Okay, let's use viewing rights. Viewing rights. There are some satellite companies that don't have viewing rights to show or to broadcast premiership. So you subscribe to those companies, but when they are playing any live match of the premiership, you can't watch. It is the one they played last week that they have rights to broadcast. So you are a week behind schedule. Just like we're always eight minutes later than the sun. I hope you know that the earth is eight minutes behind the sun. Everything that happens here happened eight minutes ago. Ah. In Kambe, there are things. How do you say that in English? Amen. <laughs> in Kambe, there are things, Abi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So you don't have viewing rights, you can't broadcast premiership. Why? You've not paid the price. You've not paid whatever you were meant to pay to have viewing rights. Excuse me. Christ paid the rights for us to be able to mine the word. He paid. What was the price? His blood. Listen, you carry value. You have mining rights. Number two, mining tools. Without the right tool, you can't mine. And the tool you will use depends on what you want to mine. You don't take the tools you use to mine for precious stones to go and drill for oil. They have, when you are drilling for oil, hydrocarbons, it even depends where are the hydrocarbons, the oil. Are they onshore or are they offshore? Because hydrocarbons exist underwater as well as on land. The equipment they will use to drill for underwater is different from what they will use to drill on land. Geology, sir. Am I, am I correct, sir? You have badges. Oh, hallelujah. Haven't you wondered before, how is it that uh, they construct bridges over, over oceans, over rivers, over lagoons? Who was there to lay the foundation? You know, you will see columns, huge columns. Who entered the water? Which bricklayer? 
who was the Tiri or the Semu that went to mix the concrete and cast the columns the, to cast the concrete to put the, before they now constructed the bridge on top of the columns. Who did it? I think we should be asking such questions. Who, who did it? When did Tiri become a, a, a diver? And he went underwater to do that. Do you know what they call hydraulic hammers? You see barges with cranes on them, on those rivers for several weeks. You think they are fishing? They are not fishing. They are hitting. The hammer is down. The hydraulic hammer is down under the water. Doing work. Going deep down. Going deep. Am I correct, sir? Going deep down. Going deep down. <laughs> Going deep down. There are depths in God. <laughs> there are depths in grace. <laughs> there are depths in the spirit. <laughs> Go down. <laughs> deep more. <laughs> Use the right tool. I would say tool. The one who gives the tools is the Holy Spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit is the custodian of all the resources of the Father. Where you need strength, he gives strength. Where you need wisdom, he gives wisdom. Where you need persistence, he gives you persistence. Where you need patience, he gives you patience. Where you know you're going to hit a rock, he directs you away from that part and brings you back on course again and you continue digging. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. The right tool. The right tool. You need the right tool. The Holy Ghost will give the right tool. So, attempted to give the little boy David his armor for the battle. It was time to mine. What was to be mined? The Philistine was to be mined. Goliath was to be mined. Excuse me, mind that sickness. Mind that health, con mine it. When you mine it, you become master of it. You have exploited it. <laughs> we see another dimension of mining. So it was to mine Goliath. And Saul said, you are a small boy. You've not seen war before. Take my armor. Mining tools. Mining tips. Take my armor. Go. Ah! The Bible says David assayed. That is he attempted to, to walk. The weight of a coat of mail. I have an uncle who was involved in an auto accident. In 1976 or so, military man. He was in the Air Force. He's retired now. And uh, he lost his leg, one of the legs. I can't remember that, right or left. Totally, he, he, it had to be amputated. So that leg was amputated. So he had to go to England for surgery and so on. And finally, he came back with a pro, pro, prosthetic leg. So he wears a prosthesis. In those days, when technology was not like this, you know the weight of that prost prosthesis? It was eight kilograms. Eight kilograms. Let them add eight kilograms to your 102 kilograms. You know? It will take a soldier to carry that thing. True, true. So he walks with star. You won't know. And he served though till he retired. He retired in 1995 or so. So from 1977. He served for that long. Soldier, old soldier. And he said, Tolu, I said, sir. With the loader here, I say yes, sir. He say a madman created military. I say yes, I agree. <laughs> you know, eight kilograms extra, and he will carry it, and he will salute, and so on and so on. But they didn't give him uh, postings of. He was he was uh, chief supplies officer. I think he retired there in uh, you know airport base in um, air force base in Nikeja, you know logistics command. So what am I talking about? The right tool. Mining tools. So David said, I've not proved this, sir. I can't go in this, sir. Give me the one. Well, let me just stay with the one that I know. <laughs> I'm sure the Holy Ghost was influencing the young boy. The one that he knew as a little shepherd boy was more than enough to get the job done. At the end of the day, just one. Somebody say, just one. <laughs> Stay with the strategy of the Holy Spirit. It might appear foolish. It might appear too simple. It might appear, listen, listen, listen. This can't be it. You know, I mean, I mean let's, get, let's get serious. Somebody was falling from a cliff. And uh, he saw a branch. He held on to the branch. But the branch also was about giving way. And he had a voice that said, jump down. I will hold you. He looked down, he didn't see anybody. He said, anybody else there? And it was an angel that was saying, jump down, we'll hold you. He didn't believe the angel because he didn't see anything. Even when you don't see, 
as long as the Holy Ghost is in it. And it will take an understanding of knowing the, his voice to know he's the one. Hallelujah. Ah, if you mind God's word, you will understand how God speaks. Praise, God, praise the Lord. That does not eliminate the risk factor. You, at times you are very sure this is God. But at times you are saying, ah, is he God? Ah, are you sure he's God? And then by the time you think, I will say, oh, it was God that spoke to me that time. And then you are cool. But there are times you know. Am I, am I correct, sir? There are times you know beyond the shadow of God that this is God. It may not happen like that all the time. Oh. So that is why faith is still needed to operate in the supernatural. You still step out by faith. Ah, there's the risk element. Hmm. Ah, and I want us to finish this thing today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the right tools, mining tools. Okay, let's read um, a few scriptures. We need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to give us the right tool. And that's Ephesians 1 and 15. From 16 it says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Apostle Paul saying, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may do what? May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. When you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you know the tool to use. You know the tool to use. Your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. Hmm. You will know what is the hope of your calling. You will know the details of the inheritance you have in the saints. See how I'm reading it. Not only that, you'll be able to understand how the exceeding greatness of God's power works in us who believe. Not only that, you'll understand how Christ was raised from the dead without anybody's intervention. Hmm. When the, and then you'll understand the tools to use. Mining tips. There are tools we must use. Spirit of wisdom and revelation is one. Angels! Angels! At times, will come to your aid. At times, the tool to use is worship. Acts 13, 1 to 2. Now there was in the church certain prophets and apostles. The Bible says, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me. Or as they worshiped the Lord. I think I have that here somewhere. Uh, let, me, let me read. Um, in the New Living Translation, Acts 13, 1 to 2. One day as these men were worshipping the Lord and fasting. One day as these men were worshipping the Lord and fasting. Old King James says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. That's verse 2. Rock Media verse 2. One day as these men were worshipping the Lord. Uh, and you have, I said uh, King James. Give us King James. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted. What did, did we just see in New Living? As they worshipped. So when you hear, once you see ministered, they were worshipping. At times worship is the tool to mind the world. Remember the story of Elisha. I think I will end there. I think I will end there. I will end with the story of Elisha. Let's read. 2 Kings 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. I will end here. If we are to continue, I'll let us know when I have the release. Otherwise, we we'll just end it there. Can we exhaust the word of God? Impossible. Second Kings chapter 3, are we there from verse 11? But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Jehoshaphat was saying, we need the word to go into this battle. This was the son of Ahab that was king of a northern kingdom and Jehoshaphat was king of a southern kingdom. Amen. So Joram and Jehoshaphat, and they were in alliance by marriage. You understand? They were in-laws. And so, so he said, is there not a prophet of the Lord here? Because uh, the king of Israel had bought some prophets, but he did not believe them. It didn't sound like it. Did you hear what I said? What they were saying did not sound like it. Why? Jehoshaphat knew the sound. Jehoshaphat understood the, 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 the nature, the flavor of the word of God. God's word has a flavor. <laughs> God's word it, it has a flavor It has a savour It has a smell it, it, smell it has a taste God's word Hallelujah <laughs> The more familiar you are with the word This is the word Hallelujah Amen Many times we hear more than we must hear Many times we hear more than we have been told That is when you understand that the word of God is working in you Amen You are hearing beyond what the preacher is saying Amen You are seeing beyond what the preacher is seeing because it is the Spirit of God that inhabits the Word of God for it to be the Word. The Spirit of God energizes the Word of God, quickens it, makes it alive. Makes it alive. Let's read. 
And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elijah the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. That is Elijah's servant. And Yeshua said, The word of the Lord is with him. Meaning the word of, Lord, of the Lord was not with all those prophets that were prophesying before. If you read, you know, the earlier verses. So the king of Israel and Yeshua and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. That is Ahab's prophets. Go and meet the prophets of Ahab and Jezebel, his wife. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. No. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look toward thee nor see thee. They were looking for a word. They were searching for a word. They were digging for a word. They were prospecting for a word. They were mining for a word. They went to the prophet who under that covenant. Part of what I wanted to say, if I had time to finish this, was we need uh, mining skills. Third tip would have been mining skills. Anytime you are reading the Old Testament, read it with New Testament glasses. Because some people carry principles from the old or, or practices from the old. I beg your pardon, I should have said. They carry practices from the old and bring them to the new. And they're going to say all, all sorts. Somebody was saying the other day on TV, this is the time to give a Pentecost offering. If you give a Pentecost offering now, you know the job of Pentecost. Ha! In the New Testament. It was okay for the old. So when you are reading the Old Testament right now, read it with New Testament glasses. Why? The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. We must understand that. That would have been my third point, but let, let's, let's leave that. Worship. Let's, let's go on. Hmm. So we're reading. Verse 15. But now, bring me a minstrel, a musician. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, that is worship, that the hand of the Lord came unto him. It was mine in the world. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water. Was it about water now? It was about defeating the enemy. But see what God was saying. The word of God. Yet that valley between you and the enemy shall be filled with water, that you may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. They needed water. Not only that, and this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Did God tell them how he will deliver the Moabites into their hand? But they were thirsty. The animals were thirsty. The soldiers were thirsty. They needed water. And there was a valley separating them and the enemy. He said, for thus here the Lord, the word of God came. Meaning the dog, the dog, the dog until they found the word. When they found the word, make this valley full of ditches. He said, for thus here the Lord, you will not see wind, you will not see rain. Yet, water will fill those ditches in the valley, in the depressed place. And then you will have more than enough to drink. And guess what? By the time the sun shone on the water in the valley, there was a reflection in the face of their enemies. What they saw was blood. They thought they had died. And the enemies rushed to come for the spoil. And they rose and they killed them. That detail was not in what Elisha told them. But that was what happened. The word of God knows what to do about your life. The word of God knows how to handle our situations. The intricate details, leave them to the world. You just take the one he has given to you, stand on it, and see the word walk in your favor. Hallelujah. I've said it before in church, food knows what to do when we ingest food. You put food in your mouth, it knows what to do. Amen. The food knows where to go. Do you command your food after, you know, nice meal that your wife made. Amen. Whatever it is she made. You know, and you... You eat, you ingest, and then, uh, you know, you chew on it, you swallow. Remember peristalsis that they taught us in school. You know, peristalsis takes place in the intestine, and the food is moving and moving. And you now tell you, oh, yeah, go, go now. Oh, yeah, enter the lower intestine, and small intestine. Oh, yeah, enter the big intestine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, absorb. Let, let my body absorb. Let the enzymes mix with the food. Uh -huh. Do you tell your, your, your body how to process food? Food knows what to do. It knows where to go. In fact, it knows the one that will come out as waste. The word of God knows what to do. But get it. The word of God knows what to do, but get it. Get the word for your health. Get it. For your children, for your husband, for your wife. Get the word. 
Hallelujah. Me, I have confessions of the word of God that I make for my wife every day. I have confessions of the word of God that I make for my children every day. Hallelujah. Some of us just go through life anyhow. Life is not anyhow. In this world, you will have tribulation. But rejoice, for I have overcome the world. Christ overcame. How do we connect with that? With our faith. Walk. Follow his footsteps. Follow. Did Christ read the Bible? Yes, he did. Was there a Bible in the days of Jesus? Not this way. But there were parchments. The Torah was the writings. He will enter the synagogue. He will take the scroll from the attendant. And he will open to the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to, to bring the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. And so on and so on and so on. Oh yes, he read the Bible. He will say, Moses and the law said this. He, he kept quoting from the Torah. That was the body of writing available in his day and time. He was a student of the Torah. He had a prayer life. Follow his footsteps, you won't go wrong. Ah, touch it, my brother. Follow his footsteps, you won't go wrong. My time is far, far, far gone. Hallelujah. Follow his footsteps, you won't go wrong. So, first tip we looked at, mining rights. I have mining rights. Second tip we looked at, mining tools. I have the tools. As I depend on the Holy Ghost, it tells me the right one to choose. David knew he was to take five smooth stones from the brook of a rick, he took five smooth stones, put it in the shepherd's bag. He knew where to put the stones, not in his pocket, but in the shepherd's bag. He knew how to advance against the adversary. He knew when to shoot that sling. Guess what? That stone went for the only exposed place in that man's forehead. Only the Holy Ghost could have done that. Precision. Precision of the Spirit of the Lord. Walk with the Spirit of God. Depend on the Holy Spirit. And see you mind the word successfully. All heads bowed, all eyes shut. Can we receive the help of the Spirit of the Lord? To mind the word of God. We have heard that there are levels. Levels. In the world, levels, levels in grace, but we have to reach them as we mine. Dig deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Be disciplined with the world. Dig your treasures and exploit them for your benefit. Rededicate yourself to the study of the word of God. Enroll afresh in the school of the word of God. Say, Lord, I've come to enroll afresh. I've come to register afresh in the school of your word. Some don't have time for the word. They believe in prayers, but they don't believe in the word of God. It is the word that makes your prayer life effective. No word, no effectiveness in prayer. Unfortunately. So prayer is that avenue for the release of a power in the word of God that you carry. And is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, ask or imagine. According to the power that worketh in us. The power that worketh in us is the power of the word of God. Please stand to your feet as you pray for yourself. I'm giving us time to pray for ourselves. Lord, I come to pray for myself. I will never, I will never be complacent. I will never have a feeling that I am sufficient. No, I'm not sufficient in myself. My sufficiency is of God. I need your word more. Open my eyes to see more. Open my heart to know more. I want more of your word, more of your ways. I will not stop digging. Help me to dig more. Help me to discover more. Help me to find more. Oh God, for the days ahead, for the months ahead, for the years ahead, for the challenges ahead. Yeah, Lord God, for, for the work ahead, for the assignment ahead. Much more, Lord, much more. Lord, show me your word, show me your ways, show me your glory. Reveal much more unto me. Fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know what is the hope of 
your calling. I want the glorious riches of your inheritance in me as a saint. I want the exceeding greatness of your power in me that worketh in me according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ Jesus. When you raise him from the dead and set him with you at your right hand in the heavenly places, far above all prosperity and power, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. For Christ has an appointed head of all things to the church, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I want to see what you see, Lord. Show me what you see. I want to hear what you are saying, Lord. Help me to hear you clearly. Help me to understand you perfectly. Help me not to walk in error. Please pray for yourself. Help me not to walk in error, oh God. I desire the victory that comes by your blood. I desire the victory that is loaded in your word. To be my daily experience, my daily reality, your victory, my daily reality, your victory, my daily reality. Let your victory, the victory of the cross, be my daily reality over my marriage, over my health, over my finances, over my future, over my needs, over my present circumstances and situations. Let your victory be my reality. Your victory, Lord, let it be my reality. I'm asking us to pray for ourselves. Lord, that your victory will be my reality. That I will walk the pathways of your victory continually. No delays, no hindrances, no obstacles, no afflictions in the name of Jesus. No setbacks, no failures, no disappointments in the name of Jesus. I command every stone of delay rolled away. I command every reproach rolled away. I command every garment of shame rolled away. I command every rock of hindrance rolled away in the name of Jesus. The stone at the tomb of Jesus was rolled away on the resurrection morning by the resurrection power and by the token of a resurrection power I command every hindering stone rolled away every hindering stone in any life represented here rolled away every obstacle rolled away every shame and disgrace rolled away every handwriting written against you contrary to you rolled away erased by the blood erased by the blood you are manifesting a symptom that your mother had that eventually led to her exit. You're manifesting that symptom. Can you declare the word of God over it? In the name of Jesus, we cancel it. Whatever is a bond that exists in that realm, we break it at the place of prayer. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we break it. That person is free. Free. Free forever. Free forever. Free forever. We give thanks. Free forever, we give thanks. Free forever, no pattern, no pattern, no pattern. Everything is upside down. I speak the word of God for order. Let there be order, let there be clarity, let there be a pattern that shall be seen from today. A pattern, a clear pattern, established pattern of progress unto increase, Pro progress unto fruitfulness. Thank you, Lord. Ah, finally, receive your new song. It's a month of a new, receive your new song. Finally receive your new song. Say, Lord, I, I receive my new song. I receive my new song. Specify the areas. I receive my new songs. Over everything I've been waiting for. Over every desire. Over every expectation. I receive my new song. Over my children, my grandchildren. I receive my new song. Over our jobs, our careers, our businesses, our ministries, our prospects, our projects, 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 a new song, a new song, a new song, the intervention of heaven, the intervention of heaven concerning you, concerning your children and your grandchildren, a new song, a new song, you've cried for longer, yeah, you've mourned for longer, you have sorrowed for longer, it is time to sing a new song, receive the healing balm of Jehovah, the healing balm of Jehovah, the healing balm of Jehovah. For there is balm in Gilead and there is a physician there. Therefore the heart of a daughter of my people is healed. Thank you Father. Oh Lord you are good. And your mercy is endure forever. In Jesus name. We have prayed. You may please be seated. All eyes shut, all heads bowed. If today you want to come to Christ for the first time. Just raise your right hand above your head. Nobody's looking at you. All eyes shut, all heads bowed. You want to come to Jesus for the first time today? Please, I said all heads bowed, please. All eyes shut so that we can allow for some privacy here. You say, Jesus, I want you now. I'm ready 
for you to be the Lord of my life. Just raise your hand above your head and I will pray for you wherever you are. I'll pray for you. He will give you a fresh start. Up on the gallery. Up on the gallery. A fresh start. Okay, no hand there. Down here. A fresh start with Jesus. A fresh start with Jesus. I do not see anybody. Please, let's invite people to church. They're church. They're unsaved. Go out of your way. Invite them. Let them hear and be transformed. If you want to rededicate your heart to Jesus, just stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your heart to Jesus. Means you are born again. But then some things have slipped and you are coming back with a new determination, a new resolve to serve the Lord. Better than you did before. Just stand to your feet for us to pray the prayer of rededication together. Anybody like that? Okay, I don't see anybody. Okay, let's give thanks to God for his word then. Can we stretch forth our hands towards God's servant and pray for him?